going on, everybody? <clears throat> wow, my voice is messy. Apologies for that. Um, I just woke up, so good morning to you guys. And today, we're back with a review the review for Godzilla Minus One. Because I just watched it last night, late last night. And honestly, the first thing I'm going to say is this is genuinely one of the greatest movies I've seen in recent years. I'm just going to start with that. First and foremost, one of the greatest movies I've seen in recent years. Now, we'll get into it later on. I did have a couple very, very minuscule gripes, but they were so insignificant that it's it doesn't even affect like my personal rating of the film. So like usual with the review, the review, for those of you who have not seen my old videos, <coughs> wow, I think I might be getting sick again. Anyways, for those of you who haven't seen the older review, the reviews, uh, bringing the series back, and basically, instead of reviewing a movie itself, right, we review the reviews of movies. So we go through different websites, and we look at what everybody is saying in the comments and their reviews, and we we review those. So I'm going to start this time, uh, like usual, probably with Rotten Tomatoes. Now we've got a 97 tomato meter and a 98 audience score, which is crazy because a lot of movies that come out these days, the, the critics review and the audience score are typically wildly different. Um, you have a lot of films where like the tomato meter will be like 60, but then the audience score will be like 85. Then you have movies where the audience score will be 60 <laughs> And the tomato meter will be a 90. And it just makes no sense. But this is one of those films that everybody's kind of agreeing when they sit down and watch it. They're like, wow, this is this is a good movie. So the critic consensus is with engaging human stories, anchoring the action, Godzilla Minus One is one kaiju movie that remains truly compelling between the scenes of mass destruction, which is factual. An instant classic addition to the franchise, Godzilla Minus One has terrific special effects and a really entertaining story to match which is also factually correct but we are going to we're going to look at a couple of the critic reviews a lot of the times you'll hear me say on these kinds of videos that i don't really care for critic reviews a lot of the time but this is one of those movies i want to see what they say so we have godzilla is one of the strongest blockbusters of 2023 a movie i could see easily smashing its way into the best of the year list Organic, heartbreaking, and cheerworthy, and unholy marriage. Oh, and also, just for anybody worrying, I do no spoilers. I don't. I uh. I don't. I'm not going to go into spoilers. If any comment pops up with spoilers, I will try to you know scroll away as fast as I can. But I apologize if any comment does give a spoiler. Um, if they do, I, I'll avoid that. But I'm not going to give you spoilers. Um, where was I? An unholy marriage between Gunkirk and Jaws. Oh, actually, dude. Served up with a side of raw courage. Incredible film in addition to being gr a great Godzilla movie. Dunkirk and Jaws is actually kind of a good analogy. I mean, Dunkirk had... I mean, Dunkirk was made specifically to give you anxiety. Which is why... Oh, hello. Which is why... Um, what do you call it? The music, the score in Dunkirk. I don't know if you ever looked into it. The music for Dunkirk was specifically made in a way where it feels like the movie keeps or the, the music keeps getting like louder and louder or like more, you know, intense, but it's actually looping around itself. So it helps to keep the audience in a consistent state of something's about to happen. Something's about to happen. Something's about to happen because we're conditioned that when movie soundtracks get that way, it's something like something's about to happen. But a lot of times in Dunkirk, the move the, the music was doing that, but then nothing was actually happening yet. And then even if something happened, the music kept doing that. So you were like, oh, is there more? And it's not like a conscious thought, it's just one of those subconscious things that they mess with you. 
Um, so here we have it's monstrously entertaining. Oh, but uh, as for that point, it's not as intense with the um, anxiety, I guess, as Dunkirk, but the, the sentiment is still there. It's shared. Monstrously entertaining. In a year plagued by a bunch of disappointing tentpole releases, Godzilla's triumphant return to the big screen should be proof enough that there is no such thing as franchise fatigue, just bad movie fatigue. Do better, Hollywood. Full review in Spanish. <laughs> this, this might be my favorite one so far. But you can see, like, even the top critic, right? The first Godzilla movie that made me cry, but also the first one that made me feel afraid. Dude, this movie, it does not pull its punches. Actually, it doesn't pull its punches, but it kind of does. I'll get to that later because I, I feel like we're going to see uh, normal people's reviews saying things like that. Um, if you have any interest in all giant creatures, uh, at all in giant creatures, see this movie on the biggest screen possible. If you have any interest in, at all in the future of humanity, see this movie on the biggest screen possible. <laughs> Best Godzilla movie ever. True blockbuster magic. Dude, not even, like, remove Godzilla from the film, right? Let's Let's take Godzilla completely out of it. Let's pretend that this was a movie that was just made, right? And it's not Godzilla. It's just they make up some monster for the movie. It would still be one of the best movies I've ever seen in recent years. I wouldn't put it at like my top five of all time. Maybe not even my top 10 of all time. But in recent years, top five maybe more top six I, or top 10. I would have to, I mean, obviously I might be getting a little too hype because I just saw it, but it's, it's fantastic. Godzilla minus one is a celebration of Godzilla's legacy and it shows audiences why this monster has endured for 70 years. I like that. I like that point. It's one of the best movies of the year, hands down, without a doubt. Like, dude, there's all these reviews, right? So now we're going to go to, um, we're going to do the audience score. And I'm actually going to try to find a low star review. <coughs> but let's start with awesome nuclear lizard smash of Japan and the people have to come together to take it down. Great human drama amongst the monsters mayhem. Amazing gripping tale of found family. Not really a Godzilla fan either, but this iteration of the king of the monsters was honestly the best version I've been exposed to. This film does such an amazing job in highlighting the human cast and root for them rather than the tyrant lizard best movie i've seen all year a definite must watch that wow that's a good point i didn't even realize that i didn't even realize during the movie i was rooting for the humans more than i was rooting for godzilla i didn't even actually root for godzilla like i didn't even find myself wow that's a good point dude every godzilla movie ever i've rooted for godzilla This is the first film with Godzilla in it that I did not root for him. Dude, the human story was just actually compelling. And that was a point that was made with... Um, I'm going to scroll while I talk for a minute to see if I find any low star reviews. But that... Oh, worst movie in the world, but don't give an explanation. Okay. Um, <laughs> look, every... King Kong versus Godzilla. The human story, I, I felt the movie would have been better without it. Especially the storyline with the kids. Like the kids breaking into like the highest, most top secret facility in the world. I felt like that movie would have been a million times better with no human story in it. Just focus on Godzilla and Kong and use the humans only as a medium to connect the two. Like how the, the, you know, they put Kong on that ship to take him over off of Skull Island. Um, that kind of stuff was fine because it gets King Kong into a place where he could fight Godzilla. Alternatively, they could have just had Godzilla show up at Skull Island and have Kong have to protect his island. Um, but still, I just felt like the human story was such a waste in that film because it just got in the way of what was actually good about the movie, which was King Kong vs. Godzilla. This movie, the story, the human story was so good and compelling that I loved that 
Godzilla was... How do I word this properly? It felt like, like yeah, Godzilla is the main character. It's Godzilla. Of course. But in this movie, the human story was actually so good that it was almost like Godzilla was... Not sidelined, because he wasn't sidelined at all. But it was, man, That's what, I'm trying to explain it without saying it the wrong way. Because the wrong way to say it would be like, it's almost like it wasn't about him. And that it was more about the Japanese people coming together without the support of their government. But the, obviously that's not true. Let's just, <coughs> sorry. <laughs> Let's just keep going. I want to try to find a low star review that actually genuinely tries to explain why they didn't like it. But look at this, dude. Every single review is just high, high stars. Okay, here we go. Movie was a bit slow in the first half, but then it picked up with deeper emotions and actions in the second half. I don't think it was slow in the first half. I don't think it was slow in the first half at all. It starts off with with a very interesting. So the first the first intro of the movie, like the beginning of the movie, is is this guy right here. Um, so the the movie takes place in uh, right at the end of World War Two. So he, this guy right here, I'm not going to spoil anything, but he uh, was in the Japanese military. He's on an island, and a very young Godzilla attacks that island. And it's just an outpost. It's nothing, you know, crazy. Um, but then after the war, he has PTSD from that. And the beginning of the movie where the person was saying it felt slow was more so just because they were setting up his character's entire purpose for what happens at the end of the film and let me tell you <laughs> did this guy say godzilla was thick <laughs> <I like it. coughs> i liked how godzilla was thick it is crazy to do for a five-star review but that's funny that's actually hilarious I might actually just stop it there and go on to the next site because nothing's going to be. I like how Godzilla was thick. But look at this. Like, I could sit here and read these all day, but none of these are low are low star reviews. Truly epic in all right ways. Believe the hype. Yes. Um, this is a brilliant masterpiece of monstrous proportions. This one will be talked about for years. Long live the king. Uh, this is one of the best Godzilla movies overall. This is a great movie. And I love that I loved... I love that the film is in Japanese. I actually love, like, not even on some woke BS right now or on some, like, virtue signal or, like, anything like that. Like, no, I'm not, I'm not one of those people, but I genuinely did like that the film was in Japanese. Um, obviously, I mean, it's a Japanese movie, but I'm saying I like that there was, that this was a Japanese movie because... I felt like that just really immersed it deeper into post-war Tokyo and post-war Japan. And when these characters were talking about certain cultural things of the Japanese at the time, to hear it in Japanese, but also read the face of genuine Japanese um, personalities... Because the Japanese as a culture are very respectful and very honor bound and very different than the West. Um, like you don't you don't get that kind of behavior or those kinds of personalities in the Western world usually, because Japan is very unique, and Japan also has done an amazing job over the history of their time of not getting rid of their culture um, entirely. Now, there are periods of Japanese history where the Japanese government, during different iterations of government, um, wanted to get rid of culture because they wanted 
uh, some more docile people, um, especially after the fall of the last shogunate and, you know, the collapse of the samurai and um, into the Japanese empire, which eventually, you know, collapsed after World War II. They still managed to, to keep a lot of their cultural significance and importance, which makes Japanese actors very unique as well. So you have you have people who you have these you have people who grow up in a place that's already very unique, where personality traits and things that you do socially are very unique. And then they bring that to cinema and acting. And it's so much more compelling for this kind of story than what American actors would have been able to portray. Because since you were actually watching Japanese actors act Japanese characters in post-war Japan, they have tones and inflections that match the script. They have facial expressions that match the script. They have body language that matches the script. And it's almost like they didn't even really have to act as much as just be themselves because Japanese culture is so familiar with these um, with these things that some I mean, some of the things in the film um, are not common in modern day Japan anymore. But these people are still familiar with those with those, you know, um, not necessarily personality traits, but those social cues or you know the the different ways that people bow um and the different reasons that you bow different ways like i won't spoil anything but when you see um a japanese female in the film bow as far down as she can go and then you see a man right next to her only bow a little bit down right and then you have if somebody's desperate for something and they slam their forehead on a table and put their hands on the side of the table and they start <coughs> kind of begging a little bit, like saying please and stuff like that. It's obviously you can have anybody act to that, but it felt so much more authentic coming from people who that is that is their culture. And that's something that's lost on Hollywood these days, on American Hollywood these days, because there's a lot of films that they try to do cultural things. And you have people who grew up as like a childhood actor on Disney Channel trying to emulate that. And yeah, there's some talented actors out there. They can do it. But this felt more like I was actually legitimately being immersed into post-World War II Japan. And they nailed it. Well, let's look at some of these letterbox reviews, right? Just thought this was absolutely incredible. Wasn't expecting to be emotionally gut punched by a Godzilla movie, but here we are. Dude, some of the guys I went with were like, I almost cried at the end. One guy was like, I, I, I felt a tear coming at the end of the film. It was, dude. Two films now in 2023 have dared to examine the fallout of societal implications of World War II's nuclear exclamation point. <laughs> that's a good review oh my god okay <laughs> let's get into this one a hard-hitting social drama chronicling years of life of a man broken and haunted by his own failure to prevent the darkness and devastation that enveloped the world following the introduction of the atomic bomb and the inadvertent opening of a door to an endless plague of hopelessness and destruction set upon future generations a film which truly encapsulates the sheer power abject terror and subsequent futility that man, that humankind was forced to face in the wake of its own unimaginable creation. A story told through the eyes of determined engineers, scientists, and soldiers gathered in the name of nationalism to nobly serve their culture and civilization as they knew it from the raw, monstrous horrors to which they had borne witness. And an ambiguous resolution to the inevitable humanist clash between blind optimism and bleak reality. The second movie is Oppenheimer. <laughs> Personally, I kind of prefer the one with a giant fire-breathing sea lizard that eats battleships and levels cities. 
this delete this part delete the bottom part this sounds like a, a, an explanation of Oppenheimer but this is Godzilla <laughs> And the second movie is just Oppenheimer. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's just absolutely fantastic. Wow, they could have replaced Godzilla with an army of some other major threat, and it still would have been great because of how well-written the human characters are in this film. Absolutely. That's what I was touching on before. Get Godzilla out of the movie. It's still... It's still one of the best movies I've seen in recent years. But the fact that it's Godzilla obviously makes it that much better because it's Godzilla. Godzilla's awesome. The, nobody can see Godzilla on screen shoot a nuclear heat ray out of his mouth and think that's not cool. What kind of lower body workout is Godzilla hitting these days? All right, let's, get, let's talk about that really quick. Um, crazy what more than six degrees of separation from Mark Ruffalo can get you. Dude. <laughs> but let's talk about this one really quick. So the reason I think that person left that comment is because of um because of the CGI in the film, right? You have uh, the CGI is not the greatest you'll ever see. There's plenty of moments where you can clearly tell this is CGI or um, maybe not necessarily CGI, but just some other form of rendering a scene without like just creating that in reality, right? But those moments pale in comparison to how good the movie is. Okay, first of all, this guy... If I don't see him in more movies in the future, I'm going to be pissed because he's amazing. But anyway, there's there's a few moments um, where you're like, oh, I could tell that that's CGI'd. But the movie's so good that you don't care. It doesn't matter. The writing, like when the writing of a movie is so good, the CGI could be w way worse and the movie would still be good. Now, the CGI is not bad in this, but the point I'm saying is that you can tell, like, it, it, for a split moment, you might get pulled out really quick and be like, oh, yeah, you could clearly tell that's, you know, this, this, and this. But it doesn't matter, because that just boils down to budget and time. Um, but the movie was just so good that it didn't matter, man. And then you look at things like what Marvel does nowadays, like, like the She-Hulk TV show, right? The writing was horrendous but that's why people started attacking more than just the writing and more than just the story they started attacking the cgi and how bad it looked this movie does not look bad at all right godzilla looked amazing the important things looked amazing some of the least important things like here this is not a spoiler but every time godzilla is about to appear deep sea fish start floating up to the surface and every time they showed the deep sea fish floating up to the surface, it kind of looked a little um, off because of the editing. And in those moments with the deep sea fish floating up multiple times, those moments I was I, I personally was kind of pulled out just just a tiny bit enough to to notice. Um, that it wasn't necessarily like a fully clear scene, but then you have like, look at this dude, look how amazing this looks and you get pulled, you get pulled. All right. Yeah. This is why this, this is what I was looking for. Somebody was saying his, his ab workout, he's shredded, dude. He's got pecs. He's got abs. You can see, I mean, this is obviously not at legitimately abs, but I'm just making a joke here. Like you could see, right. He's, he's clean but the the cinema like look at this dude look how good this looks so the cgi in some very minuscule moments wasn't top notch but it doesn't matter because the important things like godzilla himself and other things he does in the film like the dude these parts like everything that mattered was good and 
I wonder if there's, um, can I look? Okay, yeah, let me try to find if they have a, one specific photo I'm looking for. Oh, I can't go further than that? Oh yeah, I can, okay. I'm gonna click through really quick to see if I can find what I'm looking for before I end, before I end this. Oh wait, actually, hang on. This guy was also really good. I mean, they were all good. She was fantastic as well. The whole cast. I mean, I'm not saying that that, specific, that picture right there was specifically the cast members, but everybody who worked on the film, directed, wrote, all that were fantastic on the movie. Whether their face was in it or not, they were all fantastic. I don't think they have the kind of photo I'm looking for. I was looking to see if they had a, a photo of um, the nuclear explosion, but they don't. So I can't show you how good the CGI looked for that. But honestly, dude, the movie is just, I'm just going to end it here because this right here encapsulates everything perfectly. Like this right here as a review of the film is better than how I would have worded it. So I'm going to leave you guys here with that. Please go see this movie. Do yourself a favor and go to theaters to see this movie because this is absolutely goaded. But I'll catch you guys next time. Peace out.